Atlassian, we don't believe in the lone genius. We believe creativity and innovation exists in everyone. We've invested in creating a culture of innovation that's inclusive, that gives everyone a chance to have an impact. Team curiosity is our currency. So there was this problem that we actually uh, always develop new features and capabilities directly into our product. We saw that this was not really efficient, so we've changed the organizational structure so that we could support for cross-product efforts. If you have like a reusable component, you don't need to jump into the product and understand the product and the source code of the product. You just change this component and it's actually being changed for all the products and not just one. For a while, we've been really wanting to solve a problem and improve the experience of sharing content and confluence for our users. So we got the opportunity to actually tackle this in Innovation Week. And Innovation Week is where the whole team gets to actually put everything aside and only work on things that we really want to do and we really want to try and solve. So we have this framework called Disrupt. And Disrupt is all about ideation. So what Disrupt does is basically ask you to write up all your best ideas and then throw them all away come up with your new batch of best ideas, throw them all away, and then do it again repeatedly. From 500 ideas, we would maybe only ship three. But those three are the ones that would really matter. So we have a concept of 20% time, which means that we spend 20% of our time on innovation. I used some of my 20% time to try out some technologies that I was interested in, like machine learning and natural language processing. We tried to extract actionable tasks from code review comments in Bitbucket. By doing it, we learned a lot about the different problems we'll have to overcome if we decide to implement something like that in the future. When you make decisions at an organizational level, often you're trapped making like the broadest possible decisions that make sense to the most number of people. So having something like Shipit, where individual people can pursue their individual goals, you know, you get a lot of those uh, out there ideas that you just wouldn't get, you know, any other way. The ideas are often referenced after the fact. And you can see projects where they're referencing various shippers and saying, we like that idea, let's try it that way. Are you going home? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a joke. <laughs> None of the code we wrote is actually going to ship. Like, that's all trashed. That is a good <laughs> but, thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the idea, you know, like, we got it in front of a, a large portion of the company. We've used Disrupt in our team for understanding how we can uh, make a feature more friendly for teams. We've used it to look at viral growth methods. Knowing that it's coming is something that definitely means that we're always in that rhythm of thinking about the next innovation week, the next ship it. The company really gets behind it. It's not something that uh, you can opt into. It's really very much an opt out thing. Everyone gets on board, everyone's doing something. We can't spend all our time just experimenting and trying stuff out. So using our 20% time, we can actually try out different ideas that we weren't sure would work. And the ones that do work opens a whole new avenue of ideas that we can do in the future. Innovation is the creativity and the energy that you feel when you're challenging the status quo. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dom Price. I was, I was just doing my stretches backstage because it's very important to be in condition for this kind of thing. And I realized I've not touched my toes since 1997. I get like about a foot away and then I offend the people behind me. Welcome to Ship It Live! I hope you all grabbed a drink and some popcorn on the way in. The first thing I need you to do, just cheers the person next to you. Congratulations on getting yourself through this, having so much fun and bringing so much energy to Summit. So thank you to all of you. Cheers. Cheers. So I know you're desperate to see some of the wonderful creations that our teams have come up with. Uh, they are toiling backstage. They're really excited to present to you. But I want to give you a little bit of insight into why we're even talking about this. Why is ship it even a thing we care about? Well, the first reason is the values. Now, the values were actually one of the first things that appealed for me in applying for Atlassian. And that's because I realized that the Atlassian values were kind of the same as mine, and so I didn't have to change on my way into work. There wasn't like a work dom and a home dom. This is what every day is actually like in Atlassian. Sad, scary, and true in equal parts. When I think about Ship It in particular, there's three values that kind of jump out that either play as a team and be the change you seek. So what is a culture of innovation? 
You saw it in the video, Mike talking about the fact we don't believe in the lone genius, that cognitive diversity, people bringing their ideas together is where it's at. And it's genius, it's awesome. We give them the freedom, we get their curiosity, and we get non-like-minded people to work together. And that's what's been happening in the last 48 hours here at Summit. Now, the great thing about Ship It is, we first ran this years ago, we're doing Ship It 40 in a few weeks. Ship It 1, or FedEx 1 as it was called back then, was 14 people. We've had more people taking part in Ship It today than we had in our first Ship It. Now the great news is the philosophy stayed the same. The spirit, the engagement, the excitement is what it's always been. But we've had to evolve the way we deliver it to keep it this slick and enjoyable and engaging event. So let's quickly tell you what happens. Now I'm not a fan of planning, but planning is a part of Ship It. We like to plan our cadence because we want to give our teams this freedom, this knowledge that this event is coming up where they get to express themselves. So we plan the dates, and one of the things that keeps this alive isn't Scott or Mike or me or any of our senior execs. It's every member of Atlassian telling their stories. Stories of failures as well as successes. One of my favorite ones was one of our dev managers who in his first few weeks accidentally shipped our entire uh, Google uh, access drive and all our information and stored it in the cloud. Now, he apologized and thought he was going to get fired, but all everyone then did was come back and go, ah, oh, you think that's a failure? <laughs> Let me tell you what I did. The great thing about sharing those stories is it stops it from happening again. It makes it okay to experiment. And then the last part of the planning cycle here is around pitch it. So what happens when we do ship it is people tend not to work with the people they normally work with. They go and seek out random people in other teams, in other parts of the business, and they pitch their idea. Uh, it's like speed dating for engineers. Um, if you imagine a scene, a whole lot of people staring at the feet, it's really quite fun. And, and what happens is people share their ideas and other people share their skills, and together they form teams. Now again, they're not confident, they're not certain in what they're gonna do, but they know they're gonna have some fun. After the planning comes the event itself. Um, we set the 24-hour clock and we make sure we have a lot of fun. In every office around the world, we find a complete idiot similar to myself to dress up and hand out sweets to all of our teams. Innovation is messy, it's scrappy. And so we make sure we have some fun with it. About 40% of the ideas that people start drawing a ship it get trashed at the end of the 24 hours. I was at an event a few weeks ago, and a guy was like, how could you, how could you find a way of reducing that number? Because you know, if that number was naught, that would be perfect. I thought, if that number's naught, that's terrible. That means we're doing the things that we've always done with certainty. This isn't about certainty. It's about curiosity. And we make sure we feed them plenty of food and give them plenty of drink. So the follow-up, we don't just have an awesome, engaging 24 hours. We do stuff with it. Our Ship It finals are very highly attended, similar to today. Lots of curious people in the room listening. What idea are you trying to solve? What problem have you seen? How have you approached it? It's a great way of recognizing your peers and your teams for their creativity. And then what happens is a whole lot of things actually ship. We've formed project teams and actually created products off the back of Ship It. But also our product managers, they're the lazy ones who take all the credit. They, they uh, yes, you know that. They stand, at the, they stand at the back of the room taking notes. And suddenly, all these great ship it ideas end up on the roadmap. But that's fine, because we get people sharing their ideas and seeing those ideas come to fruition. It's a really exciting and fun time. And it's a ritual that I personally love. Even though we've expanded it, and what, a few ship ago, we had over 1,200 people take part. Yes, it's different at that number to 14. But we still have a lot of engagement, an awful lot of competition, and a damn sight load of fun. So are you ready to see your five finalists? <laughs> now, I need you to be slightly gentle with them. Uh, I wouldn't say they were nervous, but they're nervous. Um, this is going to be the largest audience they've presented to. They have been working hard in the last 24 hours, and they've been working specifically hard in the last few hours to get their presentations ready. So they're going to get four minutes each. We're actually going to open the voting, and we'll give you the voting link shortly. You can vote at any time but you only get one vote. If you make a mistake, you can remove that vote and recast it, but you only get one. So listen carefully, be curious, 
be friendly. Let's welcome the first team, Confluence Trello Sync. Hello, I'm gonna start with a confession. And that confession is, I love conferences. Innovative thinking, lanyards, catering, super smart people everywhere, and catering. But sadly, I can't go to conferences all year long. I have a job, like you all, and I've got stuff to do. I've got meetings, deadlines, stakeholders, deliverables. And it's really hard to know what's important, what's due tomorrow, what's due next week, what's important but due later, and what does later even mean? Now with Confluence, you can help capture actions. You can help align teams on what, gets, what needs to get done. And there's this feature already existing in Confluence called Confluence Tasks. Here's a quick demo. You can simply create an action, assign it to someone, and give them a due date. How many times have you been to a meeting where people go, oh yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. Or, uh, yep, okay, I'll do that. Does it happen sometimes? Often not. And not because they don't want to do those things, but because they just get missed. They fall through the cracks. Confluence Tasks is a great way to hold people accountable. You can tell I'm a program manager. And then we have Trello. And Trello is a really great visual way to map stuff. And I say stuff because you can use it for pretty much anything. We have lists, we have cards within those lists, and you can move them around and prioritize your project or your life. So what we wanted to do in Team Red is take these two qualities and bring them together and integrate Confluence tasks with Trello cards. And we created this very sexy animatic, which we user tested with customers at the Ship It booth. So we have on our left our Confluence tasks, and we have respective cards being created over in Trello. Move those cards to the done list, and they are then respectively updated in Confluence. So that's a very sexy animatic. But, uh, and it was when we validated it with, with customers that we decided to roll up our sleeves and get busy. So we've rolled this out to Confluence Server. We wanted to do cloud data center, but we actually ran out of time. There's only so much you can do in 24 hours, so we started with Server. And you can see... <laughs> you can see this is my profile page, and you see a brand new button, Sync with Trello. Okay, let's hit that puppy and see what happens. All right, we've got our authorized box. Of course, I, I give you permission, Trello. That's all good. I select my board that I want to sync with. Eat that frog. I select my list that I want my new task to be moved into, and I select my done list. Hit sync. We're done. We are now synced. We have now synced our Confluence profile with our Trello board and we have a helpful link there to click through. Now I can hear what you're saying right now very quietly to me. You're saying, Peter, show me a side-by-side -side comparison. Let, let's do it. Okay, on the left-hand side, we have a Confluence page. Now, Team Red, we're, we're pretty confident, so we're planning our celebration party. And on the right-hand side, we have our Trello board, our synced Trello board. Okay, let's start uh, creating some actions here. So, you know what, I'm gonna take the first action and uh, I'll assign that to myself and I know all parties, you need to stay hydrated. So, let's, uh, let's buy some beer, hit publish. Now, fingers crossed, okay, we want a card to be incoming. Over in Trello, yes, we have it, we are synced. I'm gonna buy that beer, move it into done and then back in Confluence land, I'm ticked. So that means everyone who's watching my page wondering when's this party gonna happen, they're gonna get notified that I bought the beer and the party is about to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna hear a lot of stuff 
in these presentations, but if there's one honest truth in this room, it is that we are all busy. We are all way too much busy. And with Confluence Trello Sync, it allows you not to just get shit done, but get the right shit done. Okay? Yeah. So vote red, Confluence Trello Sync, and let's get this party started. <laughs> I think, I think Pete's one of like the most Aussie people we've ever hired. <laughs> All I heard then was bloody house confluence, bloody house Trello, put a shrimp on the barbie. Um, <laughs> but it looked good. Something about a party. I'm going to be there if I'm added to the page. Uh, next up, we have Sammy Peachy in page three, Platinum for Confluence. Round of applause, please. Hi everyone, my name is Sammy Peachy, and today my team and I are bringing to you Page Tree Platinum for Confluence. Now, unfortunately, managing your content in Confluence isn't the easiest thing to do. It's very easy to create an incredibly long page tree over the lifetime of a team or a project. And the bigger the page tree, the harder it becomes to manage the content within it. How do we know this? Well, you tell us. It's hard to organize. People get lost. They hate reorganizing pages. And honestly, I don't blame them. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just drag and drop to reorganize the page tree? Yeah. Well, I hate to break it to you, you can already. But it's incredibly hard to do. We hide it away four clicks deep into space tools. Um, I actually spoke to a few people this week, and they didn't know this existed. <laughs> Some of those people were on my team. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you actually get here, you have to remember the name of the page that you wanted to move. By this time, you've probably forgotten it. And the other problem is customers report that it's buggy and that it doesn't work. I wish it was easier or easier to know how to organize pages and subpages. Some sort of drag and drop and rename function. That'd be nice. I agree with you, anonymous customer. What if you could organize all your content from the convenient location of the page sidebar? What if you could easily rename pages, create child pages, sibling pages, delete pages, all without having to navigate away from the content you're looking at? Introducing Page Tree Platinum for Confluence. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to go straight into a demo here. So we're going to head over to this lovely little uh, pencil icon, and that enters edit mode. And we're going to just go and um, rank Atlassian's dog. So Clover is my dog. She's obviously the best. I'm going to put her at the top. Sorry, Thor. Now we're going to go ahead and rename this page inline. Um, and we can do that. And we can also undo that if we think we shouldn't make that change. We can also go ahead and create a child page. And this will open the editor now. And we'll go ahead and create a new page. We'll save that. Wait for the Wi-Fi. There we go. We're loading. We're loading. And we can, we can enter the edit mode again. And you can see it's created it as a new child page. We don't really want that. So we're going to drag it back up to the top. And we're going to save that. And that's updated in real time. That's live. We can go back in. We can drag it again. And we can also undo that action. How awesome is that, guys? <laughs> now, we, we got a little bit bored. We, we did more. And you're probably wondering what we could do at this point. Well, we did this all again for mobile. Yeah, that's exciting, right? All right, so we did this for Android, so we'll just jump right into the Android demo here. So we have um, the Android space navigation going to turn on edit mode. We can drag my dog's care schedule to the top, rename this page in line. It's more of an FAQ. We'll save that. We'll go into this uh, child list. We'll go ahead and move this page, select the new target location, go ahead, and we'll check that it worked. It's a bit of a bug. We had to refresh that. That happens in Shipit. It's not always perfect code, unfortunately. 
We'll go ahead and create a new sibling page and we'll call that breakfast because my dog has to eat multiple times a day. We'll go ahead and save that and it's there. How awesome is that? All right, so to quickly recap what we've done for you, you can now organize all of your content right there in the sidebar in the context of the pages that you're looking at. You can rearrange with drag and drop, perform simple actions like rename, edit, delete, and finally you can do inline creation for child and sibling pages. So it's time to give your content the platinum experience it deserves. Vote for us, Team Green, uh, page three platinum for Confluence. Thank you. Absolutely awesome. So when we do ship it, there's a whole lot of teams that go looking for a new opportunity. They genuinely want to innovate and do something completely random. And then we've got a whole lot of teams that actually listen to your feedback, whether it be issues that you've tracked or things that you've commented on or things we've heard from you from events like the last few days. So we actually hear you and we listen and they remember and they use those 24 hours to fix things that you talk about. So don't be afraid to share your stories with us, good, bad or indifferent because the teams are listening and they'll use these 24 hours to create some awesomeness. So next up, we have the team that have done Status Page Connect. A big round of applause, please. Hey folks, my name's Tyler, this is Andrew, and this is Blake. We're Team Status Page Connect, and this is terrifying. <laughs> some of you, some of you might not know Status Page, but I'm sure you know our customers. Starting off with Harvard, they have 22,000 students. That's 22,000 potential people who might want to view their public status page. That's a lot of people looking at our product. That's a lot of people that, that's more people than we have in this room. Next up is Twitch, with 100 million users, slightly more than the number of beers consumed at Bash. Then there's Dropbox with a half a billion active users. And of course, our personal favorite, the Australian Tax Office, serving 24 million plus two tax paying citizens. <laughs> so we can see Status Page is a little product with a huge audience. A ton of big names count on us to talk to their customers when things go wrong on the web because we make downtime and maintenance less painful. Out of the box, we built a dead simple, rock solid product. And it's easy to make it true, custom extension of your brand. We've done the hard engineering work to make sure everything hums behind the scenes. Boring stuff like high availability, sending millions of notifications in real time, and keeping Timo, the office dog, from eating important server cables. But some people have specific use cases for incident management just like people have niche use cases and workflows for JIRA. So building on the battle-tested Connect platform, we've created Status Page Connect, and this is how it works. Developers can create Connect apps, which are listed right inside of Status Page, and then users can install them with just a click. So let's say that you're having an incident and you wanna be totally transparent about what's happening. We've built this app, to let you embed a live stride conversation directly on your status page. So then your team can discuss the incident right in stride, and your users can see the conversation in real time at the top of your status page. So your users know that you're on it and that you're paying attention to what really matters. Whether you're a status page customer or an Atlassian Marketplace developer, you can build rich custom integrations to better connect with your end users. The Marketplace has been battle tested on Jira, Confluence, and Bitbucket. Building apps on status page can put your content in front of millions of potential end users. Now you might be wondering what kind of stuff you could build with this. We've been talking to people at Summit the past couple days and we've got a few ideas. A Twitter integration could display relevant tweets alongside your scheduled maintenance. Or oftentimes, your customers and team members notice a problem before you do. With a help desk integration, users could report a problem in the first place that they look, your status page. 
or one of my personal favorites, linked issues. Search for any issue on your tracker and give your staff full context into your downtime or maintenance. But wait, there's more. Yeah. When did, did you do that? Uh, no, seriously, there's, there's more. We need your help. With Status Page Connect, you have a huge opportunity to build apps that we haven't even thought of yet. Apps that could be used by the world's top teams to help their millions of users. Build external, highly visible apps leveraging new and interesting data. Or optimize your existing workflows with tight first class integrations. Or maybe best of all, build apps that market themselves by living on a public platform millions of people visit each month. Status Page Connect is working and ready to go. We just need your support to get our bosses to let us ship it. So vote for us and bring Status Page Connect to life. Thank you. Brilliant. I particularly love about that one, Status Page is a great addition to the Atlassian family. And it kind of touches on that thing that we hear from lots of customers and certainly in the SaaS world, this idea of communication and expectations. The quicker and clearer you communicate, the better you get on with your customers and you don't let them down. And then also Connect, uh, a great platform in the ecosystem uh, for connecting your integrations. So next up, one of my favorites and a hopeful one for all of us, Emil from Austin, is gonna talk to you about missing meetings. <laughs> Hello. They tried to stop me coming out here. That's pretty fun. That's our swallow. Uh, greetings from Yellow Team. I, I want to start with this. Can we agree that meetings are important? Because we think so, but then again, we're Atlassian's video engineering team. And, uh, you know, we're the people that built HipChat Video and the amazing new video experience in Stripe. So, granted, we're biased, but you also seem to think that they're important because every month, we host millions of meeting minutes for you guys, and thanks for that, by the way. So if we agree that meetings are important, we can also agree that they can be a pain, um, specifically when missing meetings. And it doesn't matter what the reason was. Maybe um, you were delayed in another meeting. Maybe uh, you got just sick and tired of having meetings that day. That never happened to me, obviously, but you know, I hear it happens to people. Um, whatever the reason was, because of how important meetings are, it is quite a problem to miss one. And that's the problem that we tried to solve with this ship it. So to begin with, we wanted to give you something as essential as the ability to record your conversation. Here's how this works. Aaron, Christo, Lubu, and myself are in a meeting that we'd like to record. Let's see how that goes. Can we do a recording for the others? Sure, no problem. I'll start the recording right now. Aaron turns it on. OK. Now that we're recording, I think we can continue with our agenda. From this point on, the conversation continues as if this was just a regular meeting. When they're done, Aaron clicks on the recording button again, and that triggers a card back in stride in our room. And anyone who arrives from that point on can click on the card and be taken to a recording. Check out this quality. OK. Now that we're recording, I think we can continue with our agenda. How about that? Now, we know recordings aren't always the answer because watching the actual recording takes as much time as it would have taken you to actually attend the meeting, right? Um, so we wanted to go forward and give you transcriptions on top of that so that you can only focus on what's important for you there. Jana, Brian, and Lenny are having a meeting about the cool project that they're working on and they would like to have the conversation transcribed. Let's see how that goes. Hey, guys. Hi. Hey, guys. Aaron can't make the meeting today, so I'm going to start the transcriber so he can catch up later. OK, cool. I'll follow the transcriptions live and clean up any issues that show up. As soon as Brian turns it on, a card is triggered back in stride. And clicking on that card takes you to a live transcription confluence yep. page. OK, cool, I've got it open. So why don't we go around and do a little roundtable status updates, and we can all just talk a little bit about what we're working on. I can start. 
So I did some testing on the flux capacitor today, and things are looking good. I want to spend a little bit more time on it this afternoon, but uh, I think it should be pretty close. Lenny, how about you? Yeah, I've been modifying the DeLorean. I almost had the instrumentation panel all set. Probably just need another couple of days there. How about you, Yana? Well, I've got an idea to turn an EC copy into a fusion reactor for a power source. I have some designs, and I want to go over with you guys later. OK, great. Yeah, why don't we do that after this meeting, and then we can get back to work and sync up again tomorrow morning. Perfect. Sounds All right. good. Great. See you guys. Thanks. That's pretty cool, right? Now, thank you. Notice how, because of the video technology that we use in Atlassian, we're able to not only give you the content of the meeting, we're also telling you who said what, what their name is, what their avatar looks like. That's pretty cool. And yes, Dom, transcriptions can be messy. For example, in this conversation, Brian, see you guys, got transcribed as sexy guys. And um, there were some things that were so hilariously embarrassing that I'm not even going to mention them. But think about what's important here. Your entire meeting is now on a Confluence page, which not only makes it available for later reading, but it's also searchable. So every time you wonder, hey, where was it that we talked about flux capacitors and DeLoreans, you can just search in Confluence and find that, that transcription and the recording that goes with it. And that's really cool. Now, finally, though, on missing meetings, we wanted to give you one last thing that should really, really make that a painless experience. Specifically, we wanted to solve this problem for people who only cared about the important things that happened in a meeting. We wanted to give you the ability to ask Stride Every time you flag something as important, have it add a Trello card for you. Here's how this works. That sounds like a good idea. OK, we're decided. Stride, add a Trello card for improving our integration testing. Wait for it. And there you go. Now, we certainly find that very, very exciting. And there's a number of teams that we have to convince, however, that our users actually want this shipped in production. So please vote for us, yellow team, missing minutes, missing meetings. Thank you. You can see why I was so excited for that team, uh, Emil. And, and every time he pulls a team together to ship it, takes on some of the most random stuff where you're like, you will never do that. And every time you're like, oh, you, you did that. Um, I'm going to miss every meeting from now on and just catch up on the notes. It's going to be great. <laughs> Lots of actions from Scott. Just a, a Trello board full of Scottisms coming my way uh, uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, last but not least, this is your final Ship It uh, participants. Uh, they actually do look like a retired boy band. They're not. Uh, they go under the name Via. Can you please welcome them to the stage? Hello, everybody. My name is Leo. I'm sorry in advance for my heavy Australian accent. <laughs> please raise your hand if you ever bought a car. And please keep it up if you had an amazing experience. Thank you. <laughs> the process is very complex, and you always have multiple questions, and you don't know where to have an answer. Do you call? Do you <coughs> check social media? Or do you go to a website and use a contact form? As a business, you want to ha help customers to have these answers as soon as possible. At the end, you want a purchase. Businesses make it easy for <coughs> customers to use many multiple channels to ask a question, but it's very difficult to have timely answer, which basically makes customers drop it. At Atlassian, we have the same problem. You can write on community, you can reach out in us in many ways, we have the same problem. Imagine a service which helps both customers and businesses had help in a timely way that scales. A service that provides personalized communication and helps convert customers on the way. A service that is customizable and learned in the user. And it uses all power of all your existing tools. Imagine no more. 
let me introduce you Vela, the future of business of consumer communication. Vela is a super bot. Like Alexa, it has multiple learning skills. It integrates with all channels where your customers are, and it uses all power of your existing tools. Best of all, it integrates with Jira Service Desk to funnel all interactions with your customers into one platform, utilizing use queues, SLAs, and approvals to provide best customer experience. Let's have a demo. Hello, everybody. My name is Paul, and I want to introduce you Vela. So let's imagine the customer that goes to a car seller website and a start conversation with Vela and ask several questions about batteries and supercharging options. When Vela can handle question, it provides uh, control to our operator, Mike. Mike answers the question and uses a special skill to provide list of available supercharging options in the customer area. So customer get excited and he wants to book a test drive. So Vela gently asks to log in with Facebook. And later today, customer goes to Facebook and asks more questions about his car. But one of them Vela can't handle. And unfortunately, our operator is offline. So Vela creates a Jira service desk ticket to resolve this request later. And in the morning, Mike answers the question and uses analysis skill to allow customer to book. So customer may pick from several time slots and finalize the reservation. And here we are on the test drive. <laughs> this is just a small taste of what Vela can do. Like Alexa, Vela can learn new skills which can be installed from Atlassian Marketplace using the whole power of ecosystem. Vela is the future of business and consumer communication. To make it a reality, please vote for us. Thank you very much. If you could just welcome back the other four teams and give a massive round of applause to all five teams who took part. So if you haven't already, now is the time for you to vote. Go.atlassian.com slash vote. You only have one vote, so use it wisely. Just want to explain, I know those presentations were kind of slick and kind of cool, but they literally started with a blank page, uh, literally on, on Tuesday night. So they started from scratch. They've gone through highs and lows uh, and lots of experiences in the last 48 hours and the design team have been working with them to finesse those presentations, so great work. Also, special thanks and round of applause while you're voting to Molly, Kelvin, and Jeff. <laughs> the, uh, the logistical challenge when we decided a few weeks ago to experiment with Ship It Live and actually do it live uh, was an interesting one when we all looked at each other and thought we were mad. Then we realized we were, and it's still a good idea. Uh, but these guys and girls have been working crazy hard to get all the logistics ready, make this happen, and give you a show today. So we're getting some votes in. Where are we up to? Six, nine, see how many of you are there? One vote. We'll see how many of you are there. A couple more votes. Seven, 19. It's very important. They win a trophy, right? This is a big deal. It's like the moment for them. Have you voted, Jose? You vote. Who do you vote for? Good answer. We'll give you a few more seconds without slowing down. <laughs> if anyone's curious, I am available for weddings, bar mitzvahs. Uh, probably going to be out of a job pretty soon. I'm not an elite sports person. I get asked that a lot. This is actually fancy dress. All right. 
We all stalled at 905. I think we, oh, wow, 970. If we get to 1,000, I'm going to retire. <laughs> if all the staff at the back can just get the phones out, get us to 1,000. We're going to close voting in five seconds. Get your votes in. Five, four, three, two, and Jeff Locke voting. So the votes are cast. Are you ready to find out who came in third? A drum roll, please. Third place in Ship It Live Summit 2017 goes to... As soon as Jeff presses the space bar. <laughs> Jeff. Confluent Trello thing. Awesome work. Are you ready to find out who came in second place? The, that, that was pathetic. Feet, hands, anything you can do. Noise, please. Second place. Summit 2017, Chip It Live goes to... Patri Platinum, wow. with a third of the votes. So this is either gonna be really close or everyone else did really badly. If we can actually get you to make as much noise as humanly possible, otherwise I'll blow my whistle and that won't be nice. So are you ready to find out the winner? The winner of Ship It Live! Summit 2017 goes to... Oh! Hey! <laughs> Massive round of applause to all the participants, not only the teams here, but all of them had teammates back in our locations across the world taking part and uh, working crazy hours. So just a final round of applause to all of our five teams and our wonderful referee logistics people. <laughs> Head off stage. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so a couple of final things. We are taking the Atlassian team tour on the road. We're going to be traveling around the world, coming to somewhere near you. We're going to go to New York, Washington, D.C., uh, Chicago, Austin, San Francisco, Paris, Amsterdam, Berlin, London, and Sydney. It's like my travel regime for the last week. Um, so we're coming to a town near you. We want to hang out, share some stories, hear your stories. So look out for announcements coming soon. We will come to a city near you. The next time we do a summit is in Barcelona. So for those of you who are going to come and hang out in Europe, September 4th and 6th, 2018, uh, we had a great time there uh, this year. We're going to do it again. It's going to be bigger, better, and bolder. So if you're in Europe, come and hang out with us. If you want to stay stateside, your next chance to hang out with us and have fun is in Vegas. I will not be employed by then. That, that will... I have a restraining order and a deal with Vegas where we don't hang out anymore. <laughs> Vegas, April 8th till 12th, 2019. Get it in your calendar, start persuading your boss. It's going to be epic. We're going to have more stories to share with you and lots of fun. Finally, thank you. You, uh, you invite us into your homes and your workplaces every single day, and we're amazingly privileged to let you have us do that. And then we invite you into our home on days and events like this. I've had a great time the last few days hearing stories from many of you, and, and I know you've been sharing stories with each other. So have a safe trip home, have a wonderful time, carry on being awesome, and we'll see you again somewhere soon. Thank you very much.